Well, I'm very happy to be here. My name is Russell Targ, and I'm a physicist, and it's my great pleasure to tell you about the remarkable work we did at Stanford Research Institute investigating psychic abilities. We did that for the CIA, Defense Intelligence Agency, NASA, and many, many other intelligence agencies, part of the U.S. government intelligence system. I got into all this as a childhood magician, standing on the stage in New York doing mental magic. And I had the experience from time to time of having a direct perception of something in the life stream of the person whose mind I was pretending to read or whose fortune I was prepared, pretending to tell. So I was not a real psychic. I was just a kid doing magic. But I've now talked to people like Kreskin and Melbourne Christopher, and they said, oh yes, every professional magician knows that from time to time you're given some material and you can then supplement your magic trick with whatever ESP comes to you. And there are many magicians who do that, as we know. But I was not doing magic for the CIA. As we know, the CIA is not easily amused, and we were trying to do the real thing for them. The work we did at SRI involved things like finding a downed Russian airplane in North Africa with code books on it, locating a kidnapped American general in northern Italy, looking into a Soviet weapons factory in uh, Soviet Siberia, describing the construction of a huge Soviet submarine in northern Russia. And we even looked at on a, so on a Chinese atomic bomb test three days before it was scheduled to go off and described correctly that it was going to fail. So we did quite a lot of useful things for the government during our 23-year program. The ability we're talking about is a natural psychic ability that we all have in spite of what you may have heard to the contrary. People can quiet their mind and describe and experience what's happening in a distant place or in the future. And this has been talked about for thousands of years. Buddhists, Buddhists have a vast lore about what this is and how to do it and why it's desirable. And I'll try and talk about that later. The ability allows you to quiet your mind and describe and experience what's happening in the future. And you can do that independent of the distance. The most interesting thing that we found as physicists is that it's no harder to describe what's happening in Soviet Siberia, 6,000 miles away, than it is for you to describe the funny object I have in my pocket. 6,000 miles away does not decrease the accuracy or the reliability as compared with something nearby. Looking into the distance is no harder than looking at a contemporaneous event. And that's why this is called a non-local perception. Not quantum mechanical particularly, it pertains to the fact that we live in a non-local space-time described as a scientifically, recent, most recently by Schrodinger in the 1920s and then proved in the 1970s and 1980s. So the idea of non-local connections is not new age. This is accepted in the physical community. The hottest topic in modern physics is exploring non-locality. It was described originally by the Buddhists 2,000 years ago, but modern physics is finding fun on. The leaders of the program that